So I did a video about measuring an unknown inductor using the parallel resonance method. And this is the circuit that we used. Uh, very simple. This is the unknown inductor. This is a known 1% capacitor. And this is a 1K resistor here. And this circuit may look familiar if you've seen that video. Um, we just basically have the capacitor and the inductor hooked up in a tank circuit, just to parallel with each other. And we put a signal into the into the input side over here. Now, in that circuit, or in that uh, video, we put in a sine wave, and we used the scope here, and we measured the uh, the peak of the voltage across this circuit. Either side of resonance is less less voltage out, so there is a peak, and at that peak, we then measured the frequency of the input sine wave. In this particular case, we're going to take and hit this circuit with a considerably slower square wave. Now this is not quite as unknown as it used to be before I started the previous video so we have a or I have a reasonable idea this this should resonate or somewhere around 31 kilohertz or so inside of this. But one thing we're going to do is we're going to use the scope probe compensation output off the oscilloscope which is at 1 kilohertz. And we're going to we're going to ring this. We're going to, it's just like hitting a bell with a hammer basically and you'd only do it every so often because the uh, the waves that come out of here are considerably faster than this so you want to give you want to give the circuit here time to do its thing before it gets hit again and that's where we're going to be putting in one kilohertz which is more than fast enough and when it looks up when you see it on the scope it uh, gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. So anyways uh, let's go take a look on the scope and you can see where we're looking at. We're looking just across the inductor here on the oscilloscope. Now when you look at the circuit you'll know there's, notice there's only one wire going over to it. That's because it's coming off the scope. So we're using that same ground which is this ground right here. I did hook up a second wire from the uh, scope probe compensation output and that second wire was totally unnecessary. made no difference at all because we're already grounded. So let's go take a peek at that waveform and uh, do some measurements. So on the scope here you can see the results of putting a square wave into that circuit. On the rising edge of the square wave we have a rising edge correspondingly here. And on the falling edge of the square wave we have it right here. We can see the falling edge there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this up a little bit. And we're going to do some counting on here and figure out what sort of frequency. This is the frequency of the resonating circuit because it's that, it's that a change, that very quick change that basically is like the hammer hitting the bell and uh, makes this thing do what it needs to do. So there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to take and move the waveform down a little bit and get to these edges over here close to the bar or close to the graticule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count 10. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we are oh, not quite to this second small graticule here. So we're 50, 100. Why no more 50? Because it shows us up here 50 microseconds. So we're 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. And I'm going to call that... Uh, 318 microseconds. So we'll go and do the calculation and I'll show you what's up. So from our oscilloscope we had the measurement of 318 microseconds and we can see that right here. So this is it basically drawn out. Um, frequency is 1 over time. This is hypothetically this would be normally one cycle but recall that we took it across 10. So 1 over this amount comes out to this. We took it over 10 cycles so we have to multiply it by 10 to get the true value of our frequency which comes out to 31,447 Hertz. We then take and place that into our formula here. Here's our frequency. We know our capacitor because we chose it, our 1% 10 nanofarad capacitor and that is this one right here. And if we fill in the blanks this is what we end up with and throw this through our calculator, 2 times pi times this amount, 1 over, square that, and then divide that result by this tiny number right here, which is our capacitor. And we end up with 2.56 millihenries for the size of that inductor. Same as saying 2560 microhenries, same thing. 
and that's the that's the basis of it. Um, if your scope or you don't have a, a square wave generator, take a look at the other video about the op amp speed comparison. And um, there's a nice little circuit inside of that, pretty simple to make, that gives really nice fast rising edges if you use a TLO81. And uh, give it a try. See if uh, see if you can measure some inductors with that uh, with this situation here. One thing I thought I should mention as well is this method here, this ringing method, this needs an oscilloscope. The other method, um, using these, the sine waves with uh, the resonance, you can use a multimeter as long as your multimeter goes high enough in frequency to give you a reasonable uh, measurement uh, for the frequencies that you're going to be using. So that's uh, one of the differences between the two, and there's many other ways to measure an unknown inductor.